My name is Anibal Basu. Our company's name is Sage Policy Group Incorporated. Uh, we, along with architects GWWO, were hired to deal um, with the analysis around these capacity issues. The goal has been to frame for policymakers, for instance, the school board, potential solutions to the capacity challenges facing BCPS high schools today and going forward. I'm going to provide you with some guidance in terms of how we've conducted our analysis and what you will encounter when you go out there today. Um, you've probably already looked at some of the boards and so you already know, but I'll also walk through how some of these things, some of this analysis can be interpreted. So as you know, we've termed these gallery walks or public information sessions, let me give you a sense about tonight's purpose. Uh, we wanna learn about this high school capacity study process. It, from a study team's perspective, nothing is more important to us than being credible with you. Uh, and so we hope that by this evening's end, and certainly by the end of this public engagement process, which is in September, um, that you will view this analysis as being credible. Uh, tonight, you'll review draft scenarios for providing high school capacity relief. You'll provide feedback. As I say, BCPS staff and consultants will be around the maps that you'll see out there to facilitate the discussion and capture your thoughts. And we've set up an infrastructure to do exactly that. And, all this, though, and though, although discussions around the maps are very important, please also complete the online survey. Uh, as I understand it, about 1,000 people have already completed that online survey. We've already gotten a lot of feedback on this process, on this analysis, and already we've begun to shift our thinking about the analysis based on that feedback, and we'll continue to shift based on your feedback tonight. Why you're here. Baltimore County Public Schools faces a shortfall of around 1,700 high school seats in 10 years. You might ask the question, well, that doesn't sound like such a big deal. That's basically one high school. The issue is that these capacity constraints are around this county. And so it is not possible to simply cite one new high school and solve this issue uh, because the capacity issues are spread more evenly around the county. Tonight represents a chance for you, a key BCPS stakeholder, to respond to some potential solutions to the school system's current and prospective high school capacity issues. We also ask, oh, we'll set that aside. Now, these are 2027 projections. You see the orange bar there? That's enrollment projected for 2027. And then the blue is capacity. And what you'd like to have optimally is an alignment between those lines. But you'll see that in many instances there is not that alignment. So for instance, take the school to the very top, Catonsville, which is projected to have far greater enrollment than capacity. The same is true for Perry Hall, the same is true for Towson. These schools, absent some intervention, will be desperately crowded come 2027. And you might conclude that they're already quite crowded, but the situation will certainly last into 2027 based on projections. Conversely, there are certain schools that are projected to be under capacity, or if you prefer, under enrolled. Take Woodlawn as an example. That's a school in which the blue bar exceeds the red, uh, sorry, the orange bar, and so their capacity exceeds enrollment. Now, one potential solution is pretty obvious, isn't it? Well, if Catonsville is overcrowded and Woodlawn is under-enrolled, why just can't we move some Catonsville kids to Woodlawn and be done with it? But when we suggested this at focus groups we conducted at Catonsville High School, and during the gallery walk that was on Monday at Catonsville High School, some stakeholders, and this might surprise you, said that they were not that keen on that as a solution. Um, that's not a knock on Woodlawn, as it turns out, but many families from Catonsville view themselves as being from Catonsville. Uh, many parents have told us, for instance, that their kids go to Catonsville, and they went to Catonsville. And I've met quite a few people who go to Towson High School whose parents went to Towson High School. Towson is Towson, thank you for waving. And so uh, it's not unusual, we understand that. Also a lot of discussion, by the way, about feeder patterns. That uh, there's been some desire to have feeder patterns that try at least, if possible, to try to keep neighborhoods more coherent. So that if you have a school like Ridgely Middle, you don't have them move into three separate high schools so that a group of them flanks off, let's say, the Lock Raven High School. Again, nothing against Lock Raven High School, but now they're, with, they're not with their friends. So these are the kinds of very broad, complicated issues that we're thinking about as a study team. Um, and you can see you know, all of the schools represented here. Uh, so that's, that's what we're facing uh, and trying to make the numbers work. So what you will see at this public information session, you will see a number of proposed potential solutions generated by the study team. 
We, of course, as I say again, look forward to collecting your feedback, and based on your input, the study team will be modifying these potential solutions and then presenting them once again to the community in similarly structured gallery walks in September. This is a multi-month public engagement process. What has, and will, what has happened and will happen, a three-pronged approach to gathering community feedback. We conducted, uh, uh, you know, over the last month or so, nine focus groups. Two at Catonsville High School, um, two at Lock Raven High School, two at Dundalk High School, one at Central, so on and so forth, two at Pikesville. Um, we got a lot of feedback from certain stakeholders at those focus groups. We also, of course, have that online questionnaire that we ask desperately for you to fill out tonight. And then these gallery walks, these public information sessions. Three this month, July 9th has already taken place at Catonsville. Tonight is July 12th here at Carver, and then July 17th at Dundalk High School, if you'd like another bite at the apple. But, um, and then we'll go back as a study team, as I say, modify the scenarios based upon your input, upon what's written out there, or what you write on the surveys. And then it's in September, there'll be a, another round of gallery walks and we invite you, of course, to those as well. What this is not, we have been hired only to consider capacity issues. We have not been hired to consider school conditions. However, because of massive public input into this process, this actually may be evolving as we speak. But BCPS must ensure that every scholar has a seat. So imagine a situation in which we were doing the opposite in which we're considering school condition issues, dealing with that, but then we find ourselves with 1,700 too few seats by 2027. That also is not a satisfactory outcome. So at a minimum, every scholar must have a seat. And that's what this is about, primarily. Of course, whatever solutions are ultimately implemented will likely have some impact on the physical quality of certain schools, because to deal with capacity issues, you either have to build new schools or add to existing ones. And that obviously has some impact on condition. So imagine this as well, that as a study team, what we did tonight was say, look, we've come up with a recommendation that we're going to deliver to the county and to the BCPS board. We wanted to you to see that recommendation and then drive home safely. But that's not what this is. We will show you tonight no fewer than seven potential solutions, and I'm telling you right now, we will modify those solutions based upon your input. And it's very likely that in September you will see certain solutions that you will not see tonight because of that modification. This is scenario one, and you'll see these on boards outside. This is what you'll be um, asked to opine about, all these various scenarios. Um, so there's a lot of numbers here. Let me just break this down most simply. This is the before picture. You've actually seen this before. This is the current forecast for enrollment and, of course, also capacity by high school. That's the as-is situation, the current situation, the before situation. The issue here is these dark brown areas, because these dark brown areas are where, absent some intervention, enrollment will exceed 110% of state-rated capacity. That's where the crowding will be. Again, notice that it's spread across the county here. The light blue areas here are associated with school areas in which the enrollment is expected to be between 90 and 110 percent of capacity. In other words, there's a reasonable equilibrium between capacity and enrollment, at least that's the projection or projection. Now you might suggest that even 110 percent is overcrowded, but at some point, you have to have some cutoff line in this kind of analysis, even if you view that one as somewhat arbitrary. And then the light brown areas, which are right here, those are under-enrolled areas. Those are areas in which capacity exceeds enrollment. In fact, enrollment will be less than 90% of capacity under the predictions. That area is associated with three high schools, Randallstown, Milford Mill, and Woodlawn. So, now, this is the after picture, right here. Notice with this after picture, there is no more dark brown, meaning we've gotten rid of the overcrowding issues. Notice the neat alignment here between the blue and the orange lines, because we've balanced capacity and enrollment now, school by school by school. How did we do that with this intervention here? That's the intervention. That's the scenario. Before, after the mechanism, this right here. 
So what is this? This gives you a sense of what is recommended under the scenario for each high school. And then this is the macroeconomic result of that. What happens system-wide? So in this first scenario, we call it use existing seats, but it really is an admixture of various potential choices. You see right here, this is uh, additions to existing schools, and I'm, I actually can't read the text, so I'm trying to do this from memory, so if, if I say something incorrect, just tell me. But this is additions to existing schools, this is replacements. See that? That's capital projects. How many capital projects? Zero plus four is four, that's that number right there, capital projects. Those capital projects, based on GWWO's estimate, would in aggregate cost $491 million. That's that number. Notice under this scenario, zero magnet seats are added. This tells you how many students are subject to boundary change processes. So we're moving a lot of kids around under this scenario. Some capital projects, some movement, uh, total number of seats added is right here with those capital projects, not quite 3,000. And that's how to read each and every one of them. So let me juxtapose that against scenario number two, which is use existing seats aggressively. Again, notice under this scenario, dark brown, no dark brown. The math works. And that's the thing that these seven scenarios each have in common. The math works in every instance. We solve the overcrowding issue, but there are very different implications for individual school communities and for students. Because this one uses seats aggressively, meaning this excess capacity here in the Southwest, we really use that aggressively under this scenario. So what does that mean? That means you don't have to spend as much on new capital projects. So the price tag here is not 491 million, it's 275 million, you save a lot of money. But, again, it would probably imply that kids that are at Catonsville, at least some of them, would have to move to a different school. That's how we're doing this. So fewer capital projects, but you know, more issues of a different sort. The taxpayer might be happier with this, but certain families may not be. Hmm? So you'll see that. So this scenario minimizes the cost of increasing capacity through new construction by fully using existing school capacity at schools with less enrollment than their school state rated capacity. Well, that's, you know, in primary measure, some of the schools in the Southwest. Not exclusively, though. Now this one is almost, the next one is almost the complete opposite of this one. This one, in this one, which is just build it, we don't move any kids. No redistricting. No boundary change processes for any high school. So how do we deal with the overcrowding issues? We build. We build. And again, these, you know, when you go to the, um, the, 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 uh, the boards outside, this, these icons will tell you what's going on, whether it's a school addition or a school replacement, so on and so forth. No surprise, big price tag here, $500 million, because you're spending a lot on capital projects. But in some sense, maybe the political cost is less, because you're not moving kids from one school to another. Because Catonsville loves Catonsville and Towson loves Towson. Magnets. So another way to do this, scenario four, is by moving magnet programs around. Or maybe even adding a few. We call it magnets on the move. So in this one, this scenario uses a strategy of moving programs such as ESOL and magnet programs from schools that are projected to be over 110% capacity to schools that are projected to have less enrollment than their school state rated capacity. And this is somewhat speculative, I agree, if that's what you're thinking. I mean, how do you know just because you move a magnet program that kids are going to go there? The logic of this, if you can call it logic, is that in this system, in BCPS, the number of kids applying to magnet programs far exceeds the spots available to satisfy the demand. Um, so demand exceeds supply. So the notion is even if a, one family decides not to move along with that magnet program from school A to school B, that there will be somebody who might do that. And this is a way of rebalancing capacity. Again, the thinking being magnet programs. Now, I must point out, however, that um, this number, which is fairly low by scenario standards, around 300 million, um, is only capital costs. There is, of course, the possibility of increased operating costs. And one could argue that if you expand magnet programs, there's, that comes with some increase in operating costs. That's true. It's something we'll discuss in our final report. Now, this one is interesting. 
sort of different from all the rest. There is um, some research that's been floating around MSDE, the Maryland State Department of Education, suggesting that the optimal size of a school is around 1,700. 1,700. So in this scenario, now you might believe that or not, in fact, when we conducted a survey at our focus groups, the majority of respondents indicated that they have a preference for schools between 1,000 and 1,400 kids. That small is beautiful in this context, at least to many stakeholders. That said, there is this 1,700 number floating out there. Uh, and so this scenario prioritizes a maximum school capacity of 1,700 for schools that are receiving additions or placement schools to increase their capacity. So of course, there's some schools already that have over 1,700 in terms of capacity. Those schools won't be shrunk under this scenario. I suppose one could develop a scenario that did that, um, but my guess is it would be pretty expensive to do that because you'd be adding to the capacity challenges by shrinking schools that are over 1,700, but we would not create any new academies above 1,700 through either replacements or additions. Um, so no surprise, uh, you know, a fairly hefty price tag of not quite 400 million. Now this one is somewhat different from scenario four because here we are really adding magnet seats aggressively. It's a very expensive scenario because the study team um, made the decision that if we're gonna add magnet programs, we have to make sure that the schools receiving these magnet programs have the physical plant necessary to support those magnet programs. In other words, you can't have a band magnet program without a music room, as an example. And so there would come some capital costs with that. By the way, also, when we um, thought about expanding capacity at certain schools, the cost also includes the cost of increasing the size or capacity of core spaces, those shared spaces like cafeterias and libraries and computer labs. These costs are in these estimates as well, not simply the classroom seats. And then finally, and this might be of some interest in Towson, or at least parts of Towson, the final scenario, which is based on the FY 2019 capital plan. You'll find this scenario interesting, uh, I think many of you, because it proposes some new schools in the vicinity of where we are tonight. Um, it also does come with a hefty price tag of north of, according to our estimate, 600 million. Because, for instance, if there was a new school at Delaney, Delaney is not expected to be significantly over capacity, but parents, of course, have told us that there are school condition issues at Delaney. It's something well known, this is not unknown. Uh, and so, anyway, you, would, you could build a new school at Delaney, for instance, but you would still have those lingering capacity issues for the overall system, and so that would have a tendency to drive up the price tag, and that's exactly what our analysis suggests. So those are the seven scenarios. Stay informed and provide feedback. Um, all ma materials will be made available on the BCPS website. Again, participate in the online survey. I think that's the fourth time I've said it. And email comments or suggestions to highschoolstudy at bcps.org. It's your turn. Uh, at this point, you should not be sitting. You should be running out there because people are waiting for you to write down everything you have to say and everything you think. If you have any questions of me, please feel free to come up to me. I will answer them as best I can. Thank you very much.